the legacy of legendary trumpeter Clifford Brown. Clifford Benjamin Brown, born October 30, 1930 in Wilmington, Delaware, died June 26, 1956 in Bedford, Pennsylvania. He was an African-American jazz musician and composer from the bebop era of the 1950s. His time on the planet was cut short by a tragic auto accident. Although he had passed away at age 25, the rich body of work he left behind sealed his reputation as one of the greatest trumpet players ever. Clifford was born into a musical family, the youngest of eight children that included his opera singer, sister, Geneva Brown. He started playing trumpet at school around age 10. At age 13, his father bought him a trumpet and arranged for him to take private lessons from the famed jazz musician and teacher Robert Boise Lowry in high school. He played with a jazz group that Lowry organized and made several trips to Philadelphia. Clifford briefly attended Delaware State University in Dover as a math major before he switched to Maryland State College in Francis Ann, Maryland, where he played in the 14-piece jazz-oriented Maryland State Band. In June 1950, he was injured in a car accident and spent some time rehab uh, rehabilitating in the hospital where he was visited by the famed jazz musician and pioneer Dizzy Gillespie, who encouraged him to pursue a career in music. Clifford was influenced by many people of notable jazz, uh, many notable jazz artists of his time, including pianist Fats Navarro, drummer Art Blakey, trumpeter Louis Armstrong, band leader Lionel Hampton, trombonist J.J. Johnson, and band leader Chris Powell. One of the most notable developments during Clifford's time in New York was the formation of the Art Blakey Quintet, which would become the Jazz Messengers. Blakey formed the band with Clifford, Lou Donaldson, Horace Silver, and Curly Russell, and recorded the Quintet's first album live at the Birdland Jazz Club in 1952. Another significant move took place during this time, Clifford was featured with the famed alto saxophonist Charlie Parker for a week at Club Harlem in Philadelphia. Another young talented figure emerged with, along with Clifford Brown, Max Roach, the African-American jazz drummer and composer and bebop pioneer from Brooklyn, New York. Roach's stature in jazz would also rise and their path was soon crossed Max worked with many famous musicians, including Dizzy Gillespie, Coleman Hawkins, Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, Duke Ellington, Thelonious Monk, Charlie Mingus, Abby Lincoln, Stan Getz, Sonny Rollins, and so on. In the mid-1950s, Roach relocated to California to replace star drummer Shelley Mann with the Lighthouse All-Stars, a jazz band. He invited Clifford to LA to join the informative band, the Clifford Brown Max Roach Quintet which would include tenor saxophonist Harold Land, pianist Richard Powell, and bassist George Merrill. Former a cohesive group required a lot of stops and starts with personnel to, to, to finalize on the final quintet. At an early session of the Brown Roach Quintet, they produced a, a record called Clifford Brown and Max Roach. Uh, many of the things that I've just mentioned are highlighted on the display board, and uh, they're there for your, your enjoyment. Uh, I was happy to be able to do that research because the Jazz Festival is, is an event that takes place in Wilmington uh, annually, and it is, it's usually well attended. It has been noted that the Jazz Fest, this type of Jazz Festival, was one of the largest of its kind on the East Coast. Clifford Brown's personal life was cut short by the tragic auto accident on the Pennsylvania Turnback, as I mentioned earlier. Powell and his wife, Nancy, were on their way to Chicago for a job. Nancy was driving, and the weather was bad. Presumably, she lost control of the car, which went off the road, killing all three of them in the crash. 
Clifford was happily married to Emma Lou Anderson in Los Angeles in 1954. Sorrowfully, two years later, she was a widow. Clifford was a marvelous person and impacted all he contacted through his craft and dedication to his music. Clifford became such a legend that his hometown convened an annual tribute, the Clifford Brown Jazz Festival. The festival is free to the public and takes place every summer in downtown Wilmington at Rodney Square. The first festival, the first festival was held in June 1989, and five, it ran for five days. It, it was organized by Tina Betts, Cultural Affairs Director for Wilmington. And she's been doing this for over 30 years, and she's still, still at the helm. Uh, the festival features large, local and national stars and an additional honor was bestowed over him by renaming the street on which he was born after him, the Clifford Brown Walk. Um, we hope you enjoy browsing the display, and uh, we thank you. <laughs> 